Let's finish this picture. We're going to uh, do a few more adjustments and we're going to start with uh, adding a little bit of grain or noise to the skin to add a little realistic effect uh, to what's already here in the picture which is the pores and the texture of the skin. Uh, let's do this by merging these layers up. So go to your topmost layer and hit Shift, Option, Command, and E. That merges these layers all the way up to the top. And now let's go and zoom in a little bit so we can see the area we're going to be affecting on the face. Uh, we have nice pores in here and around the eyes uh, that add to the realistic uh, look of the skin here. What we'd like to do is add to that a little bit by going to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. You'll see a dialog box come right up. Mine is set to 5%. That seems to work for me for this picture. I have the distribution set up to uniform and monochromatic is not checked. If we move this all the way, you can see what I'm talking about in the image. If I move this even beyond 16%, uh, you see that it adds a uh, grain uh, to the skin or what is noise to the skin. Um, and the useful part of this is that it can be used to kind of mimic uh, and look a little bit or create the illusion of kind of texture and pores uh, to the skin and not just uh, large amounts of noise. I set mine to 5% and just say OK. Now let's turn the eye off. That's where it was and that's where we are. It's a subtle effect. I'll do that again. Um, the thing is it's added the noise all over the picture. Uh, and what we want to do is only put this in certain areas. So we're going to do this by adding a mask. Go down to your layers adjustment panel down here and before you launch a mask, hold down Option that will hide uh, the noise that we just put in with a black mask so it's being hidden and this way we can paint it in with our reveal which is white. You can grab a nice soft brush somewhere around 20 percent, 14 percent is fine and let's paint with about 80 percent opacity and a nice brush that kind of goes into these areas under the eye. We're just gonna reveal some of that noise where the pores already are and add a realistic look over here on the side as well of the forehead and kind of towards the cheeks maybe we can do that a little bit. Now we can dial that back. Before we do, let's take a look at what that effect has done to the picture by hitting the eye icon, turning it off, turning it on. It's a very subtle effect. There it is off, there it is on. Let's dial that back about 75% uh, or so. Let's see, okay, that looks good there. And we've had some noise in our picture. We can take it down even further, actually. It looks a little heavy-handed to me. Let's try about 60% uh, or so. That looks good. Uh, now what we want to do is make some adjustments to these eyes. The eyes are falling a little bit in shadow. We did uh, dodge them out a little bit before, previously, on one of the lower layers. But now we can brighten them and add some color in one step. Let's do that by launching a hue and saturation layer. Check the colorize box. That effectively turns the uh, whole photo uh, a certain color wherever your hue slider is. Mine is set into this uh, kind of blue uh, cyan area. And we'll find out if it's the right color in just a moment, but it looks like it could be an eye color that we could use here. Let's click the mask tab and then invert that mask. You also know there's another way to invert your mask by hitting Command I and hitting Command I again. We've essentially hidden that hue and saturation adjustment and let's paint it in where we want it in the eye. Let's hit Command Plus, zoom in nice and close here. Grab a nice small brush by hitting your left bracket key and make sure you're painting with white which is revealing this adjustment in the eye. Let's paint with about 60%. We can always drop this down. And I'm just going to go in this area here and kind of go around the color in the eye and go to the other side here and do the same. Now I can tell the blue is too rich, it's a little bit unrealistic. Um, so what I want to do with that is kind of take down the uh, hue and saturation of that layer, uh, or we can also decrease the lightness and drop some of that down. But before we do that, let's try one of our blend modes. I'm going to use the blend mode of soft light and I'm going to actually increase the saturation and increase my lightness. And somewhere in there we should be able to kind of get a reasonable eye color. Let's back out by hitting Command minus. And it looks a little bit too surreal to me still, so we can drop down the hue and saturation a little bit more. And maybe take my lightness values down a little bit. Let's see how that looks, the before 
and the after. Saturation slider can come down slightly more. Blend mode of soft light is a good one for eyes. It seems to kind of rest the color in there a little more naturally. Let's back out all the way. That looks like a decent adjustment to me. And remember, you're not limited to how this uh, color is in the eye. You can change this and you can even move it and make the eyes more green. Uh, so we can go down here towards this side. Let's do uh, something like in this area, which is green, drop down that saturation even more, maybe drop down the lightness slightly. All while in the blend mode of soft light, you can kind of see what your adjustment is doing to the eye color. So it's a great way to change eye color, enhance eye color, or brighten eye color. Um, you want to see what your possibilities can be. Let's leave it right about there and back out. Now let's take care of the sky. Let's merge this image up by hitting Shift, Option, Command, E. That merges our adjustments up to the top layer. And let's go to Select Color Range and click in the sky. And let's see what kind of a, see if we can grab most of the sky. Let's say OK to that. In my selection, I've grabbed uh, part of the uh, undershirt here. We can fix that by hitting your Quick Selection tool going to minus on the top and just waving the wand over that and it takes away that part of the selection. Let's do this uh, sky enhancement by coming down to the color balance, launch a layer. It launches the layer with our selection in mind. It knows that we want to only affect the sky and uh, not affect our subject. Let's make sure we have mid-tones mid selected. Move your cyan over just a little bit and maybe move your yellow blue slider over a little bit and you've now added a lot of uh, density to the sky, a little more rich blue. Let's go into the highlights and move yellow in a little bit. Great. And so we've effectively changed the sky. There's a before, there's our after. You can try different blend modes here. Soft light is pretty light. Overlay is kind of lighter. Uh, color is going to get a little bit more subdued but it's still there. Um, you can also leave it in this case on normal because there are no clouds in the background. You don't have to blend it into the clouds or any other uh, colors in the sky. And the last thing we can do is do a levels adjustment to add a little more uh, darkening and toning to this. So come down to your layer, layers palette here and launch lay, levels. And take your black slider and move it in just a little bit. And take your middle tone and slide that over a little bit to the right as well. Just a fraction, I have mine at 0.95. And let's see what that looks like before and after. If I take the levels adjustment off and I put it back in, it just adds some darkening. It picks up all the nice shadows. So these have been videos on walking you through uh, how to get to a skin correction, uh, how we corrected some redness in the skin, uh, then how we did some dodge and burn. We also did the clone stamp tool um, we worked with a hue and saturation slider to enhance the eyes. And then we added some final uh, interest in color to the sky and also took a levels adjustment at the very end there uh, to kind of add some more toning and uh, darkening. Let's take a look at the before. Hold down your option key on the bottom most layer. That's where we started. This is where we've come to and this picture is complete and it's in a much better place. I hope some of the things in this tutorial helped you out and that you can follow some of the steps to work on photographs that you have that may not have all of the issues this photograph did, but that may have a need for some of these steps. Thank you very much for watching.